Hello everyone. Welcome back. In this presentation, let's focus on case expression in SQL. In programming languages like C, C++, Java, Python, there is an expression called switch case. Some languages refer this as switch statement. The equivalent for switch case expression or switch statement in SQL is the case expression. That's what we are going to see in this presentation. Let's step into the topic of the day, case expression in SQL. It is similar to the if then else ladder statement that we have in our traditional programming languages. What it actually does? Actually, the expression checks for conditions and returns a value when the first condition is satisfied. We may be having 10 conditions. If the first condition is satisfied, then a value is returned. If the first condition is not satisfied, then it will go to the second condition. If the second condition is satisfied, that value is returned, else it will go to the third condition, so on and so forth. And that is why I mentioned that this case expression is similar to if then else ladder. If, if this condition, then something will be returned. Else, another if will be checked. Likewise, it continues. And if there is no match, then else is returned. However, the syntax is going to be a bit different. I hope the things are clear to you. Obviously, the case expression checks for the condition. If the first condition is true, then that value is returned. Else, it will move on to the second condition. So, it is clear that once the condition is true, it stops reading further. Let's assume there are 10 conditions. If the fourth condition is met, it would have obviously checked condition 1, condition 2, condition 3. All these conditions were not satisfied and that is why it has moved to condition 4. If condition 4 is true, it stops reading further. I mean, it won't proceed with condition 5, 6 and so on till condition 10. In case no condition is matching, how it will work? If no conditions are satisfied, then the else part is returned. So if there are no conditions that are satisfied, the else part is returned. But the interesting part here is this else part can be optional. If else part is not defined, I mean if there is no else part defined in the query, then null is returned. We know null is a special value in SQL. So null value is returned only if there is no else part is defined and there are no conditions satisfied. I hope the theoretical part is clear to you. Let's understand case expression in SQL with two examples. Before stepping into the examples, we need to understand the syntax of case expression. The case expression syntax starts like this. Always it will start with the keyword case. As you know, there can be multiple conditions defined. The first condition is defined like this. When condition 1, then result 1. Meaning, when the first condition is satisfied, then it will return result 1. If first condition is not satisfied, it will go to second condition. When condition 2, then result 2. So likewise, we can define any number of conditions as per the requirement. Let's assume the last condition is condition n, then result n is returned. As I already mentioned, conditions are specified. If no condition is matching, else part is defined. Else, we will return this result. Since there is a starting of this case, we need to specify what is the end of this case expression. The end of this case expression is ending with end and a semicolon. So here is the syntax. In simple terms, when condition 1, then result 1. When condition 2, then result 2. It goes on till we specify the last condition. The important thing is, if this condition is met, then no more statements are executed. With this knowledge, let's step into example number 1. In example number 1, I am going to prefer this table, students which contains attributes such as ID, name, and year of birth. Let's assume this is a university database which contains the student information of various batches. Now let's see example number one. In example number one, the query is select name, comma, year. So what we are going to select is name, comma, year. Here this name and year are going to be selected from this table students. But what I'm going to do here is I gonna specify some conditions when year between 1965 and 1980 here is the condition year which is this year between 1965 and 1980 then gen x it means this is going to be returned p 
people who are born in these years are referred as Gen X. In case the year is between 1981 and 1996, then millennials is returned. If the year is between 1997 and 2012, then Gen Z. If the year is between 2013 and 2025, then Gen Alpha. Considering the space requirements, I focused only on Gen X, millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha. Don't get offended if your year of birth is not matching in this. I'm going to refer this under else. Else, I'm going to return golden era. And you know the case is going to be ending with end and whatever it is going to return, right? That is stored as description from which table we are going to retrieve all these things, students. So obviously the output is going to contain name, year and these values for every student but under what column name? As description. So description is going to be another column name in the output. So the output is going to contain the data from the student's table but three columns, name, year and description. Here is the output. As per the condition, the description is there. Say John who is having the year of birth 1985. If you see 1985 is matching here and that's why John is having a description millennials. Let's see this one. Alia is having the year of birth 2005. 2005 is here. Since the year is between 1997 and 2012, Alia is belonging to Gen Z generation. And if there is no match, then else part is going to be executed. The else part is going to contain golden era for non-matching. I mean, if the condition is not matched. Let's assume Ravi. Congratulations Ravi, you are belonging to golden era because your year of birth belongs to 1950 since 1950 is not matching in the first four conditions and that is why your description says you are belonging to golden era. I hope example number one is clear but before stepping into example number two, ideally every record is validated line by line. First this will be checked, then this will be checked. If the condition is matching here for this data 1985, since this is not matching and it is matching here, this will not be validated. I mean this line, this line and the else part will not be validated at all. I hope example number one is clear to you. Let's move on to example number two. But in example two, I'm going to take a smaller table for easy understanding. The same student's table with the same attributes, ID, name and year. But this time I'm going to have some null values in the year. It means it's not known or missing. Let's see example 2 now. The query is select ID, comma, name from students. I mean we are going to retrieve ID and name from this student's relation or table order by and here comes the interesting thing. I'm going to introduce case and case expressions are when the year is null then name else year and I am ending this case expression. The interesting part here is I'm going to order by but I am going to introduce a case expression how to order by. If year is null, then I am going to order by name. If year is not null, then it's going to order by year. And that's why the output is going to contain all the four records. But for null values, you can see it is ordering by name. And that's why B, Bob comes before then Dave. However, for students who have values in year, I mean not null values, then it's going to order by year. That's what this query says, right? When year is null, then order by name, like in this case. If year is not null, then order by year. And that's why for Alice and Charlie, it's ordering by year. And that's why 2022 comes first before 2023. Because ordering by year, it's ascending order by default. And that is why Charlie's name in first row and Alice's name in the second row. I hope example number two is clear to you. And that's it guys. I hope the session is interesting. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.